Hey there, and welcome to another TLDR UK video. You might remember about a year ago now, we put out a video discussing a proposed 30 mile bridge to connect Scotland and Northern Ireland. Well, despite almost exactly a year passing and the pandemic raging since then, the ideas sprung up once again. This time though, it's not a bridge that's being proposed, it's a tunnel. So let's discuss the tunnel, what it would actually look like, why it's being suggested, and the major Brexit related issues that Johnson hopes it will solve. Before we start, we're running a special promotion with our Patreon. Every backer, new or old, above $10, gets one of these exclusive golden TLDR pin badges. They're never going to be for sale, so if you want yours, you have to sign up this month. On top of the pin, you'll get all of your usual perks. Early access to videos, thanks in videos, behind the scenes post, the ability to vote on topics, exclusive live events, and more. And the satisfying feeling of knowing that you're supporting independent, unbiased news content. Anyway, the link for all of that's in the description. So before we get into the politics and the Brexit implications that have led to this proposal, let's start by discussing the actual practicalities. What the tunnel would look like, sorry it won't be transparent, where it will connect and what crossing it will be like. Current proposals, which have been nicknamed Boris's Burrow, would see the tunnel connect the Northern Irish port of Larne to the historic town of Stranra. Stranra used to be a port too, with a connection formerly existing which linked the town to Belfast and Larn. However, this ferry port was closed in 2011, with services being shifted up the coast slightly to Ken Ryan. So why are these two towns being suggested again, despite the ferry route closing? Well, it's not just nostalgia and history, it's geography. Now, if I asked you to draw a line between Northern Ireland and Great Britain where a tunnel could feasibly go, the shorter the better, you'd struggle to find a better link than this one. In fact, it's about the shortest distance you could possibly choose. I say that as if a 25 mile tunnel under the sea is going to be an easy achievement. It might be the shortest possible distance, but that doesn't mean that it would be cheap or easy. But while it might not be a walk in the park, it's certainly possible to build a tunnel like this. Around the world there are plenty of examples of long underwater tunnels, such as the 34 mile Saikan Tunnel in Japan, the world's longest, or the proposed tunnel connecting Helsinki and Tallinn, which would have a total underwater length of 30 miles, making that the new world's longest if it was to be constructed. Actually, maybe when I said there were plenty of other examples I was stretching it a bit. Helsinki to Tallinn isn't real, and while Japan's tunnel is longer than the proposed Scotland to Northern Ireland link, the underwater section is shorter than the UK one would be. In fact, the only really comparable tunnel that already exists also connects to the UK mainland, that being the Channel Tunnel. This link between England and France features a 23.5 mile underwater section, likely very similar to the distance covered by the new tunnel, so let's take a closer look at it. The Channel Tunnel is, as we mentioned, the tunnel with the longest underwater section anywhere in the world, as well as being the third longest railway tunnel anywhere in the world. At its lowest point, the tunnel is 75 metres below the seabed and 115 metres below sea level. The tunnel's used by three types of trains. Firstly, there's the Eurostar, the passenger trains that connect the UK to France, Belgium and the Netherlands. Then there's Eurotunnel Shuttle, trains which you drive onto and transport cars and vehicles across the channel. Then finally, international freight trains, which take lorries through the tunnel. The Channel Tunnel was first proposed in 1802, but construction didn't really begin until 1988, with the Brits initially worried in the 19th century that such a tunnel might threaten their national security. Anyway, six years and nine billion pounds later, the tunnel was finally complete, connecting Britain to mainland Europe, carrying 22 million passengers and accounting for 120 billion pounds worth of trade each year. So enough about the Channel Tunnel, let's refocus on the Northern Ireland-Scotland connection. How will it compare to these core statistics? Well, official plans haven't been laid out yet, but it's expected that the tunnel's total underwater length will be pretty similar. We also don't yet know much about the project's budget, but with the Channel Tunnel's cost, adjusted for inflation, reaching £18.3 billion, it's not going to be cheap. 
Passengers and economic value is another hard one to predict, but we can be sure that it won't get anywhere near the use that the Channel Tunnel does. That's because the Channel Tunnel not only connects the UK to France, but also the rest of Europe, with all kinds of European goods coming through the tunnel. Not only that, but the route was already well travelled by boats before the tunnel's creation, with cargo still crossing the waters between Dover and Calais today. It was a pretty ideal link, connecting two very populous areas, connecting two countries, near big cities, and on a major trade route. This new tunnel, yeah, not so much. If we assumed, and this is very generous, that all three of these existing ferry routes are superseded by the tunnel, and that everyone on these routes picks the new Boris Borough instead, then that's just over 2 million people. Even when you chuck in a bunch of flights that will be replaced by the tunnel, you're not getting even close to the Channel Tunnel. Same is true with trade, with far less going on between Northern Ireland and the UK than the UK and Europe. Beyond just the cost and lack of people and goods making the crossing, there's the issue of geography. The Channel Tunnel links already thriving ports that were near their respective country's capital. This new tunnel? Well, less so. The route makes sense on a map. After all, it is the shortest route possible. But Stran Ra isn't Dover. It isn't even just that it's a small town at the moment. It's also that it's not really connected or in the most populous area of the country. We actually discussed this in our last video about the bridge, which was supposed to connect Larn to Port Patrick. Like Port Patrick, Stan Ra isn't that well connected to the rest of Great Britain. It is located on the A75 and does have rail connections, but Stran Ra isn't exactly the best spot for hauliers or travellers, being over two hours away from the M6, the closest motorway connecting the proposed route to England and Wales. So maybe this isn't seeming like the best idea. It's not a route that's travelled very much, even by the most generous estimates. It connects a pretty remote part of Scotland to Northern Ireland. It's not only going to be very expensive, it's possible that it'll also be very underused. Many of these issues plagued the previous iteration of this idea too, the bridge. The tunnel does seem more feasible, as the bridge had to be built on a trench which was known to contain an estimated 1 million tonnes of munitions and several tonnes of nuclear waste, and it was likely the bridge would have had to be closed 100 days of the year due to weather issues. So the tunnel is looking better than the bridge, but even still, why do it at all? The answer seems to be relatively simple. Politics. It's fairly uncontroversial to say that Johnson has, time and time again, supported unusual projects to help rally people around a given topic or issue of the day. From the new Routemaster buses in London, to Boris Island Airport in the Thames Estuary, to the rather infamous Garden Bridge. So what's the symbolic purpose with this one? Well, if the tunnel were to be built, it would mean that there would be, for the first time ever, a physical link between all four nations of the UK, and it would invariably become a rallying cry for Unionists on both sides of the Irish Sea. At a time when calls for Scottish independence are growing, this project could help divert attention, even temporarily away from that. A move which it's hoped would kick out the momentum for independence. But is this tunnel really on the horizon, or is this another idea like the Garden Bridge that will just disappear into thin air? Well, actually, it's already picked up a lot of traction. According to the Telegraph, the project could get the go-ahead as early as March, with Johnson and Scottish Secretary Alistair Jack both very enthusiastic about the fixed link. And according to The Guardian, the pitch for the project includes claims that they already have the backing of the Northern Irish Assembly and the Scottish Parliament, as well as claiming that there's a feasible path to its funding from the UK Exchequer that does not adversely impact on other transport funding. Whether the link is feasible from a more logistical, practical point of view is still, however, under consideration. A study conducted by Sir Peter Hendy, the chairman of Network Rail, is expected to publish its interim report within weeks, after which a formal feasibility study of the link would have to be conducted by the government before moving any further forward. That being said, according to the Telegraph, Hendy has already had his final meeting with the Prime Minister to discuss the study's findings. So if a tunnel really is on the cards, the government will be hitting the ground running. But what do you think? Is Boris's borough a good idea? 
Will it cement unity between the four nations? Or is it another clear example of yet another Boris Johnson flash in the pan idea? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.